Hi, and welcome to the Unashamedly Human podcast, a podcast created to help you get out of your head and into your life. That is, if you want to have more fun, freedom, happiness, peace of mind, and success whilst squeezing the juice out of every area of your life. Join Jackie Ford every Thursday and listen in to her warm Scottish tones, wise heart and wonderful sense of humour as she interviews guests and discusses what it means to be unashamedly human. Hi everyone and welcome to the Unashamedly Human podcast. My name's Jackie Ford and today I'm with one of my most favourite people in the whole wide world. I'm with Anka Herman who's been a guest on the Unashamedly Human podcast before and we've just been having these gorgeous little chats and we just, I forget to record them all the time and I just thought I need, I need to stop that. And as you all know, I haven't really made a podcast for a while because of Oh God, so many reasons that I don't want to go into right now. But if you're on my mailing list um, and you want to find out, then you'll find out there. And if you're not on my mailing list, oh my God, sign up and you'll find out exactly what's been going on because it's very, very interesting. Anyway, there was a wonderful play written years and years and years ago, which I absolutely adore. And it's called Taming the Shrew which is about, you know, a man trying to tame this wild woman um, to become, you know, sort of the perfect woman. And um, it's the taming of the shrew, actually. And I loved that. And, and, and when I heard that Anka had written a book that had the word taming in it, I thought, oh, my God, what's she up to? What is this about? And she's written a book and it's called Taming the Tech Monster. I mean... I don't know about you, but I mean, <laughs> tech and a monster is probably, you wouldn't think of it that way, but oh my God, how often I've sat in front of my computer trying to teach myself something like Infusionsoft or Canva or lead pages or any of these internet, you know, sort of meant to be things that help you with your business. And I've just given up because it, I just get so into my head about it. And then I've sat maybe, you know, six months down the line, sat in front and been able to do it no problem at all. So when Anka told me about her book, Taming the Tech Monster, I was just incredibly interested to find out more because I know there are a lot of you out there who have businesses who hate the online side of things. You just hate it. You don't understand it. If you're anything like me, you're that wee bit older. <laughs> you know, and sometimes you do. You get caught up in your head about it. But I guarantee once you tame that tech monster or even bloody understand what's going on, life just changes and your business changes. So welcome, Anka. It's been a long time coming. Tame us all. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I love that introduction. I'm going to have to find out about that book now. I'll send you. I'll send you. Yeah. Out there, oh, oh, absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for having me back. Yeah, let's tame some monsters. <laughs> Do you call my clients and my 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 listeners monsters? They're not <laughs> monsters. <laughs> so I mean, Anka, you you started out and you know sort of you've had a career in tech. Okay, that that was the basis of your career, and then you moved to Spain and you started doing something completely different, which I think is fascinating given what we've just gone or we're going through with this global pandemic that you actually started doing taming the tech monster way before the pandemic and in many ways mm. that's been your saving grace so do you want to tell us a bit about that yeah i think changing like changing tack entirely and the funny thing is people have often asked me like, you crazy? Like, how can you change from software development, you know, working in big corporations in the IT department, like programming, working with clients, like doing, you know, the corporate thing to just ditch all of that and start a sewing business. And people are like, how the heck, you know? And I always felt a little bit surprised by <laughs> the question because in my mind, it was actually the same thing, mm. right? So there was literally, I actually, the first time I did a client project, you know, where I actually sold something that I'd made that I'd sewn, I thought, this is exactly the same process. 
you know yes. it's just, it's only the, the 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 purely technical part it's like either i sit on a computer and program or i sit at the sewing machine and put two pieces of fabric together but everything else you know i didn't really see it as all that different mm -hmm. you know that's how my mind works <laughs> and and it it's slowly coming it's taken me a while to realize that the experience and skills I have on that technical front is something that can really help people. You know, I always love to call it nudge them over the potholes mm. that they have, you know, so, and it's easy to fall into the pothole of tech on the way to, you kind of don't see it coming. And all of a sudden there is this challenge that, you get sort of sucked into and then you're in the middle of something you don't want to be in and it's frustrating and i see a lot of that frustration and sometimes it's just a snippet of information it's just a little something that people are missing that mm -hmm. makes this a pothole mm -hmm. so you know i'm and i think the pandemic has a little bit to do with it i mean i've been bringing that kind of work in for quite some time but the pandemic has made it more urgent more immediate more yeah. you know it gave me the nudge to really focus in on really go for it in that sense because mm -hmm. i could see now that all the people who said oh no no i'm like yeah i'm not technical i don't like this tech stuff but i do in-person workshops so i don't need it mm -hmm. right so all the people who did in-person work and were quite glad to ignore all the tech stuff because they could now all of a sudden it became important and it became urgent. And mm -hmm. that was this like, oh my God, I don't even know, you know. And um, and so if there's any mission that I feel really, really strongly about is, is to help people who have a passion, something they want to create in their lives, something they want to bring to life to help them make that happen. Because there's so many challenges from so many different angles and, you know, and so many give up in despair and then have to kind of crawl back to their going through the motions life, but without even the prospect of, you know, I'm going to have my own business, right? So that's even worse in the end, right? Absolutely. You know, and I love what you said there. And can I just mention that Anka has a podcast and it's called The Passion Business Podcast. It's absolutely amazing. And she's some incredible guests on there. So please do check that out. I can absolutely confirm and agree with you there, Anka, about the pandemic has forced people. Some people, it's not been a nudge, it's been a big bloody push, you know, sort of to, to, to get them where they were meant to be, where they're mm -hmm. meant to be right now, you know, rather than where they thought they were meant to be. So I'm finding myself doing a lot of business coaching, strategy, marketing, teaching people how to sell, you know, because that's my background, you know, sort of almost four decades in, in, in the corporate environment. And that was something that I, I would do with my mentees, you know, just as part of their mentee program. But I've never thought about doing it as a standalone. Mm -hmm. And what I'm finding is, as more and more people are coming to me and going, I hear you do this. Can you help me with that? Because as much as people hate the tech side, they hate selling. <laughs> they just oh, hell yeah. can't yep. stand it. But the tech side, Anka, tell me more about the kind of thing, the kind of people that you're working with, uh, the kind of things that you're helping them with, because I'm sure if there's anybody listening right now, they're going to be going, oh, wait a minute, I've got a wee problem here with the tech stuff. When, you know, who, who does Anka work with? So we're just yeah. going to filter it down a wee bit just to help people see what you love doing and, and who you love working with. Yeah, well, well thank you. The You're people welcome. I the people <laughs> I work with are mostly funny enough a lot of authors, really? podcast hosts, creatives, coaches, consultants, kind of these passion-driven solopreneurs, like these people who have that idea, they have this passion, like, oh, I want to turn it into a business. And what usually happens, there's this idea, like, oh, I'm gonna do I want to have an online program, right? Because and then I want to work with groups and I want to have a membership site and then I want to have a podcast and, you know, and that's, and they're really excited and lit up by that vision. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to, okay, let's make it happen. Mm. That's like, okay. And then you see classic case, go to Facebook group. What's the best online course platform? 
right? And then they go and ask in a Facebook. The first thing they do is like, oh, online courses. Well, I don't know. I need the platform. What's the, and then you get 75 answers. People listing the platform that they use and that they kind of like. Yeah, right? and increasing in, 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 in the amount that it costs to buy it, of mm -hmm. course. <laughs> right, and usually I come in there and say, well, you know, there are a lot of options. Which one's best for you mm -hmm. depends on a few things. Right. And none of these people have us or, you know, like just because this thing works for somebody else, what works for you depends on mostly what experience you want to create for your clients. Mm -hmm. Who is this for? There's also coming into play. What have you already got in terms of technology? What's your setup? What have you got? How much of a learning curve are you able and willing to take on for this? You mm -hmm. know, and a few other things. So there's criteria that make that choice of the right tech a pretty straightforward process. But if you don't know about the criteria, you're just sort of stabbing around in, in the dark and it gets really overwhelming really quickly because there's just so many options and you haven't got a clue which one's right for you. Mm -hmm. And then going to the individual you know, checking out the individual ones, that's like, that's like the weight loss industry. Everybody makes their case and it sounds convincing. And in the end, you don't know what you need. And you get in that, that's where the overwhelm comes from, that sense of information overload, that sense of like, oh boy, this is like, I don't know, and course, and then what's Stripe and what's an API key. And before you know it, you go down in that rabbit hole. And next thing you know, it's like, for God's sake, all I wanted was create an online course for my people yeah. i don't want to be puffing around with api case all day and that's where that frustration sets in uh -huh. and people don't know who to trust because everybody you know and they also know they're vulnerable they know they don't really know it's like going mm -hmm. <laughs> you know like going to get your car service when you know you don't yeah. know about cars you know so you know you're vulnerable to be ripped off and to be sold something that isn't right for you so there is this and that's what people hate that yeah. sense of not knowing, being out of your depth, being vulnerable, being overwhelmed, that's what people hate, not the mm. pixels on the screen. No, I know. And I think you've, you've, you've hit on a, a point there that is so important, Anka, knowing who to trust. I cannot tell you the number of times I've been ripped off um, creating websites people said they could do what I wanted to do and then it was just, it was a nightmare. It, it was like pulling teeth. I hated it. And when I found someone the, the, the lady, um, Susie Webb, um, Web Designs, um, it's Susan Wheeler Hall. She created my website for me and works with me. But it's lovely because she's teaching me how to do it at the same time it's being done. And I yes. love that. And it takes the fear out of it. And I know that's something you do. It's like, yep. you, know, you know that old saying of like, um, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, but teach a man to fish and, you know, that's exactly you know sort of yeah. how I work with people and how you work with people and how yeah. Susan Wheeler Hall at Susie Webb works because yeah. you don't want people coming back all the time you want them to be dependent on themselves not Absolutely. interdependent with you yeah and I think a lot of people especially in the web design space it's really common still amazingly mm -hmm. that people will create an artificial dependency you know, so they will make sure that you don't know. And I've seen just recently, you know, custom themes just to make sure you can't change whatever needs changing, right? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. And and so for me, I discovered that way of working when I still had the sewing business and would do the occasional kind of project with the client. And I needed them to understand that, okay, I'm here and I'll help you create the structure of it, but I don't want to be responsible for your content. Don't come to me every time you have a performance and you want to upload a photo. Like mm. you need to take responsibility for your website, for your business, basically. Mm. You can't try and hand over, and I always call it fear-based outsourcing. That's what a lot of people do. I don't want to deal with it. I just want somebody else to take care of it. Yeah. And I really make sure, like basically, if you come into my world, I will not let you get away with that. Right? It's like handing over the passwords to all of your accounts to a financial advisor and say, oh, I don't want to deal with money, you do it. Yeah, Sounds really stupid in that context. And I think it's really just as stupid if you do it with, with tech. So I often work, mostly work with people like literally on screen share. Yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah. 
because it, it also it makes it there's a couple of things in there that makes that really powerful because people learn and they kind of what you said it's that like oh you actually see it happening it's like oh, oh you start to understand it takes the frustration out of it but at the same time it also makes it i don't know twice three times as fast because you shortcut that feedback loop right Absolutely. if you've ever had something done by somebody else you try and explain to them what you need right most designers or most people and i've seen it in big software projects even people who are called business analysts aren't good at the analysis part they're not good at taking apart what you tell them and present it in a way that actually makes sense so people mm -hmm. just go away and do what you told them to and then they do what they understand and then you come then they come back to you and then they go and you look and like oh but that's oh that's not what i wanted and you see both faces dropping in that moment because mm -hmm. the client goes like oh that's not what i wanted the designer goes oh boy here we go i'm gonna have to redo the whole damn thing because it took a lot of work to get it into that state so that you could see something so if you now say you don't like that focus color they have to go and redo the whole thing and everybody's frustrated at that mm -hmm. point so now if you do it together we'll know that instantly we pop on the photo there and you go oh yeah that's kind of not, not sure about that okay let's try something different but you don't have to create the whole thing around it for you then to say you don't like it so it really shortcuts things and it makes a lot a lot faster and then mm -hmm. the other part kicks in nothing is as addictive as progress mm -hmm. oh god yeah right? <laughs> that's so true because when you see that thing literally emerge in front of your eyes yeah it's fun oh it is it you know is. It's people like, oh, I never realized this thing that I was dreading. I never realized this could actually be fun because people see that it's a creative process. Yes. Right. And then they don't get stuck in the, oh, there's an error message. I don't know what that means. And now I'm getting all wound up because I'm saying, yeah, cancel out of that. We don't need that. You know, so it's kind of, you literally sort of shove them over the potholes mm -hmm. and, and it makes this pro this whole process fast and it makes it fun. That's so key, isn't it? I remember when, when Susan and I were doing my website and I was procrastinating on giving her content and <laughs> she just honestly, if, if, if she was kind of like a, a dominatrix, she was just like, right, meet me on this day <laughs> and, 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 you know, and, and we're going to meet every day and you need to have the content ready to put in and I'll show you how to do it. Oh my God, it was like every day I was writing new content because I realized at that point that I wanted to be accountable, mm -hmm. you know, and instead of hiding away from, you know, is it the right content? Is it not the right content? I had got up in my head about the content rather than mm. the process. And I think that's a key point in, 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 in everybody's life, whether it's, you know, whether they're being coached on procrastination, their business, selling, um you know self-harming whatever that, that there's a point in there where you believe you can't do it and you have mm -hmm. to have the insight to realize that you can do it yeah. so i know you want to keep on this yeah that is so you really hit on the essence of it mm -hmm. especially in like it replies to websites it's really obvious with website with websites mm -hmm. but it really applies to everything else as well i always say and i have gotten really bold with this i used to say what looks like a tech problem hardly ever is exactly i've changed I've ch no well that's not even true i say now what um, looks like a tech problem never is of course and i'm getting not. really bold with that because uh -huh. especially the enough even i've just come out with a little mini course especially for that that basically most of the time people have a tech problem or they're kind of like oh i don't know this website thing they don't know what needs to go where mm -hmm. and why it's there because once you know that then it's pretty simple to say okay we need this we need an image here we need this bit of text there we need this here and then the actual implementation is quick and painless mm -hmm. but when people and this is something where also a lot of the tech people don't usually want or can help you they they usually say well you need to bring the content right and I'm thinking, well, I actually consider that part of my job to guide you through to know what needs to go where and why. 
Mm -hmm. Right. So for an online course, that would be literally to map out that what's the experience you want somebody to have. And I've not had, I've not come across anybody who said they're struggling with the tech who had solid answers. They usually say, well, I've got all the modules ready. Well, fine. Now, who is it for? Well, there comes something vague. Okay, what's the outcome? How do you want, what's going to happen? So I've signed up for this course now. Okay, I'm coming in, log in, what happens? What do you, I don't know, is there a video? Is there like, what do you want me to do next? They haven't got a clue. Like I've not come across anybody who had that journey, that experience for their student well mapped out. Mm. Do you want me to have it all at once? Or how do I, you know, then where do I go? What do I do next? How do you want the whole vibe to be? You know, do you want me to be all chilled or is it energetic? Or what is the experience you want to create for me? And people don't know. And until you know that, you won't know what you're looking for in an online course platform. Right? So you really have to take that step back first. Yeah, but I mean, isn't, isn't that true of everything? It's kind of like inviting exactly. people to your house for a dinner party. Exactly. You, you know what you want, that, you know you, you know what you're going to cook, you know what the mm. ambience is going to be like, you know what music you're going to play, you know, that they're, they're, you've got it mapped out. And I think people don't realise they do this process every single day of their lives. You've and just get, mapped out my online programme. Oh, thank you. <laughs> See, this is why people come to me for business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, no, I've, I'm, I'm like, it's about to get launched. It's called, yeah, let's cook up a storm in the oh, there you go. It's exactly that. <laughs> it's exactly that pointing people to, you know how to do that. Exactly. Because you do it in your life every day. Exactly. It's exactly the process of we're doing a dinner course. Yep. It's exact like in dinner menu. But, but see, isn't that, that it, Anka, when, when, you know, when, when you're showing people that, there isn't life and then there's business <laughs> you know when people get into the scary part when they think there's a business mm -hmm. thing it's like it's all the same all of it is the same it's it's a game you're playing it's something mm -hmm. you're doing you're you know you're being creative you're having fun yeah. you know I, I remember years ago um and um I, I was doing a kind of an intensive thing with Michael Neal and I remember he was talking away about something he was talking about creativity and I had been giving myself an awful hard time. This was about 10, 10 plus years ago. And I'd been giving myself an awful hard time because I didn't feel as though I was being creative. And I thought I wasn't creative. Mm. And then as he was talking, it just sort of that lovely fresh thought that happens when you least expect it was, but you are creative, Jackie. Making a meal is creative. Drawing with your you know, your kids is creative, dancing is creative, all the things that I do in my life. But yet I had conditioned myself to believe that creativity was something completely different. Mm -hmm. Because I believed it was something completely different, I then put conditions on it. Mm -hmm. And that was almost like the, well, not almost, it was, it was like the big shutter came down where yeah. you can't, you can't access wisdom, you can't, you know, because you're so caught up in, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. And all, all that applies so spot on to tech, you know, because the only reason is because people come in with this, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm too old. Mm -hmm. One thing. I'm a woman, I'm not technical, you know. And, and I write, at least in my experience, being male and young doesn't save you. <laughs> so, Sorry, I'm rolling my eyes. I shouldn't roll my eyes. <laughs> it's a bad it's so habit. True, you know, it's so true that people often have this sense they can't do it, or this is this is a an area of expertise that I somehow don't have access to. And so I'm basically out to prove to them, yes, you do, and yes, yeah. you know exactly how to do it. And it's just like business isn't different from life. Tech isn't different from business <laughs> and different from life. It's all the same thing. And the process of learning something new, mm -hmm. it's always the same. But it's fun. Yeah. That's I it know. though. I, I, you know, I, again, that's the differentiator, isn't it? You can either see it as fun or you can see it as a problem. Yes, exactly. It, and that's where the little tech monster comes in because if you look at it, obviously the listeners can't see have you got, it. Have you got but your book there? You oh, flash up here, your yeah. book. 
Oh, look at that. He's, he's actually the, the, the whole, and I love him so much because he literally embodies the message of the whole book and the whole essence of the work I do mm -hmm. with people is to show them that what looks like this scary monster is really just a friendly little dragon that wants to play. Oh, right? that's and lovely. You, <laughs> and if you come, because that's what you just said, is yeah. when you, and it's amazing what people do, what people come out with when they say, oh, you know, I used to go like, oh, the website, oh, I don't want you go away. And now it's somebody says it's my guilty little pleasure now because all of a sudden when you go from, oh no, I'm no good at this. I will never understand this to, hmm, I haven't got a clue like how that works. Let's see, let's, let's, let's figure out how that works. Yeah. It's a totally different approach. And then all of a sudden you'll, you'll, you'll find yourself figuring stuff out. And then you go, oh, well, what else is there? And all of a sudden you come at it with that playful attitude with, looking at it as more as an experiment as a game as a challenge and then you surprise yourself and then the whole progress addiction kind of kicks in and next thing you know you've actually created something that you never thought you could exactly and it's wonderful i have my um, youngest mm. daughter who i've spoken to you about lauren you know she's in our she's doing a master's in um creative writing at the moment and um, she loves all things to do with social media and tech and creativity and content and copywriting and all that kind of stuff. And she's kind of paying her way through uni, you know, with clients that she's helping do this kind of thing. And she was speaking to a client recently, uh, well, a client that she, she, you know, that she wanted to work with. And I said to her, I said, don't think just because you know that I know how to do social media stuff that everybody does, Lauren. I said, I, I, I play with it. I get curious about it. I'm not frightened of it, you know, and, and I'll take it as far as I can. Then if I need help, I'll get help. And after she spoke to this prospective client, she went, oh my God, mom, you do know a lot. Oh my God, mom, this lady didn't know. So, you know, I can really help her because Lauren was basing on, I'll not be able to help her if she knows what you know. And I was like, no, 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 no. I've spent time learning about this, buying books, Googling things, learning, because I get curious about it instead of being fearful about it. So she, that client's now working with her, which is just so exciting. You know, my wee, my wee, my wee tiger, my wee baby, my, you know, is becoming an entrepreneur, you know, and it's just gorgeous to see that unfold. So this is the promise really, Anka, isn't it? About when you tame that tech monster, which really isn't, <laughs> it's really a thing but he's so cute you know when you see he's cute you yep. need to make that as cuddly toys I would buy one um you know when, when people see that I bet you've got them haven't you have you got have you I got just spoke to a client like a, a past client I could just caught with up with her like literally uh -huh. an hour before this call and she makes bears and she says oh maybe I should make a tech monster bear and so we're talking about that <laughs> I'm, I'm just a bit of a witch, Anka. You, you'll figure I'm, this out about absolutely. me. Absolutely. I love a bit of witchery. <laughs> All this downloads, you know, um, we're vibrating on the same level here. But when people recognise, and it's about everything in life, it's not just about tech, it's about everything, that when you see that it's only ever how you're thinking about something mm -hmm. that can cause you problems. Yep. And these problems are not they're not permanent they're just temporary until you expand your aperture you expand your awareness to see oh my god look at what I'm doing I'm creating a problem mm -hmm. like I said I think one of the biggest insights I ever had have I done have I done it again um one of the biggest insights I ever had was like when I sat and I was trying to do some infusion soft stuff and I just convinced myself I couldn't do it and then I came back to it a couple of months later and I did it without even thinking about it Because when you have nothing on your mind, you just do stuff, mm -hmm. right? And it's it's sometimes, I mean, in the tech world, there's a, I think there is a little bit of setting expectations straight. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of the thinking that people have around why they can or cannot do something is because there's a lot of, you know, a lot of these platforms when they sell their, their thing. 
right? Mm -hmm. So I think they often <laughs> go through sales and marketing 101, sell the, sell the outcome and not the features, right? So, and they're doing that. So now they always sell you that it's quick and easy, that it's simple, right? So nobody wants to say, well, in Fusionsoft, yeah, there's quite a bit of a learning curve. It's a powerful tool. It has a lot of stuff. It gets complex. So it'll take some while to get your head around it. You know, nobody will buy the thing. So they sell it as like, oh, you know, this thing is going to basically help you make six figures in a month with your business, right? And so people get sucked into these things and they because they promise the certainty that people often crave and say, Oh, mm -hmm. this, I just need to have this tool. And then my business is going to go, go. And then they start, especially with the easy peasy website builders, you know, that are simple. And then they start in and then they go like, Oh my God, I don't know what all this is. I haven't got a clue how this works. And this is supposed to be the simple thing. Yeah. Right. And then they all of a sudden, Oh, I must be really stupid or this is just not my thing. And then they go down that rabbit hole. And when they're preoccupied with that, that's when it turns into a problem, mm -hmm. you know? And an error message is the same thing. This is something that I see a lot when I work on screen with people, you know, where I say, well, see now here you have the proof right there and then that it's never a tech problem. There's some, some, error, some error, error, and you see the person like literally on Zoom, you can see them like, anxiety setting in mm -hmm. right and i'm like what okay what's going on there hmm, no idea what that is and she'll go and her mind is like oh my god people don't even read the error message they get so like there's an error i told you tech <laughs> tech never works for me and i'm just like i don't know i'm just you know people go immediately into that just read the damn thing it usually tells you what to do Mm -hmm. right and, and if not you take it and you google it so it's it's just you can tell there that it hits it, it triggers people to kind of immediately go down that rabbit hole of of thought of what they can and cannot do and when you are in that preoccupied space mm. and it's the same with selling selling you know oh i don't want to be creepy and i don't want to be whatever you know <laughs> it's like selling like sales is very similar in the sense that people have very common ways of oh, going down that rabbit hole so conditioned thinking mm -hmm. so conditioned absolutely yeah. yeah to me selling is a huge huge game it's just it's yeah. fun it's fun but but that, that's what you're, when you're working with people as well, Anka, you're, you're making something that can be an experience that is stressful and uncomfortable into something that is more enjoyable. Because once you get a couple of wins under your belt, you become oh, more confident, don't you? Mm -hmm. Same with selling and, you know, and business strategies. Once you help people get that clarity, this is what I find. They become more confident. So they, they do get more curious about things rather than that Absolutely. approach. Yeah. Absolutely. And I've actually had, like, I had a client, like, very cute. She goes, classic example of that. She goes, you know what I did? I programmed the remote for the new television all by myself. Oh, when? <laughs> you know, and she goes, well, you probably don't think much of that, but she says, you know what? I would have never even tried. Yeah. Right. But see, now I'm going like, well, I don't know how that works. Let's see how we can find out. Mm -hmm. Right. And that is an attitude that, you know, anywhere in life, mm -hmm. if you come from that place, you find yourself doing stuff that you never thought you could. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. God, so many times in my life, Anka, you know, learning to do things and believed I couldn't do it. So I couldn't do it because I believed I couldn't. And then mm -hmm. you realise that, that you're tripping yourself up. And then when you get that clarity on what's actually going on, it becomes so much easier. I mean, another example of that is, you know, is, is weight loss. Mm. You know, classic. classic. And that, you know, I, I had always been slim all of my life. And um, when my father was dying, I obviously was self-soothing and I was eating food, more food, and I put a lot of weight on. And I've been trying to get that weight off for about 15, 20 years. Mm. I kept getting in my own way. Mm. You know, just, just like people getting their own way with tech, getting their own way with business strategy, with selling. It's no different. And I was so desperate for an insight into this, Anka, so mm. desperate. 
And here I am during this global pandemic and lockdowns, you know, at various levels. I actually get out of my own way. And today I've lost over £34. And it's oh, been shit. Wow. My chin coming through. <clears throat> um, and it's kind of like, oh my God, how often I had just got in my own way. And so but you know, that's something else I'm getting a recourse for that to help people see what I've seen based on what I thought. And it's typical for people to think that keeps them stuck. Yeah. That's so true. what we're talking about here is universal. Absolutely. It's not mm-hmm. just about tech. It's completely universal that when you can see how you're creating your experience in the moment. You're either in your own way or you're not. And that's either you're in your old stories, your conditioned thinking, you're in fear or you're in flow. Mm-hmm. And the beautiful thing about people like you and people like me and people like my daughter and all these other people out there is you can not only help people with mindset, you can help them with the process and the tech. Okay, so it's the full bundle. <clears throat> Yep. And that's what people need. And there's lots of other people out there that are teaching the, the tech stuff, but they're not teaching people about the mindset and how their minds are working exactly. and why this is important. That when you truly understand yourself, mm-hmm. you can get out of your own way. Oh, absolutely. You can disassociate from the thinking and the thoughts and recognise that that's just nothing that you need to be bothered about. Exactly. Yeah. Some of the best stuff I've created, I've created it within the middle of a thought storm. Because, <laughs> but I knew it was a thought storm, so I'm like, okay, you do what you want. Ego's telling me I can't do stuff and it's all crap. Oh, and you'll never God. get this done and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, oh, okay, then I'll just try this and we'll see what happens. Yeah. But that stops some people because they don't understand their psychological experience. That's true. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they take that, okay, this is a signal, the fact that I'm going <laughs> up in my head is a signal that I really should stop doing this or that I can't you know Mm -hmm. that I can't move forward Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely yeah it's beautiful to see the universal that it's actually always the same thing oh yeah you know Mm -hmm. so tell me when are your courses starting what's going on what's happening how can people get in touch with you come on come on well, ankerherman.com, there's everything, everything's there. You know, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, and I'm literally just putting the finishing touches on the online program around that that's basically based on the book. Mm-hmm. So, but there's always, you know, there's one thing is to read the book and one thing is to actually get stuff done. Right? Yes. So it really is that. <laughs> that's so key, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so I think this is for the people who have something that, you know, they've been procrastinating on like this tech project with, you know, okay, let's just get it done, you know? And so it's literally that next, next step up from, from the book, but really, you know, to go on a journey together to tame the tech monster. So, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So it's literally like, yeah, I think the best way to get in touch is through, through my website, you know, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn. So I'm easy, easy to find. Perfect. Well, Anka, it's always an absolute joy to speak with you and to hear what you're doing and and what you're up to in the world to help people express themselves in a way that is, oh, it's just, it's who they are. It's authentic. And to do that and help people cut the wheat from the chaff and just settle into being more so... I'm grateful for you in the world and all that you do and um, your book's amazing and I know that people, you know, you have to get a hold of the book but then you have to read it and then you have to play with the ideas, you know, it's kind of like me and weight loss books for many years, I would buy them, flick through them and I never (laughs) lost weight, you know, (laughs) it just didn't happen, you -hmm. know, as as though you can can buy it and rub it on you and all of a sudden, you know. (laughs) It just does the work and you don't have to get involved. But yeah, That's no, it's a, a joy, an absolute joy, Anka. Thank you for being a guest on the Unashamedly Human podcast. And I wish you all the best with everything that you're doing. Well, thank you so much. It's been a joy again. I love speaking to you.
You could be larger than life 